there is a lump in the right submandibular region of this patient right lump in the right submandibular region of this patient right so there is no additional vomit over the lump comparing to the other area and it seems to be bit tender right bit tender and on examination on when i am having a close look i can see some recent uh, fnac marks over the lung two fnac marks are there other than that no other skin changes right so before i uh, start doing the examination i would like to stretch the neck right stretch the neck and see but obviously uh, the uh, the prominence of the lump won't change when i am stretching the deep cervical fascia because the lump is so prominent but in uh, usually in a, in a lump deep to the deep cervical fascia or the investing layer the prominence will become less when i am stretching the lump stretching the fascia right so the the lump superficial to the uh, investing layer like lymph nodes it can be a lipoma or a sebaceous cyst won't change its prominence but lumps deep to the deep cervical fascia will reduce the prominence when i'm stretching the deep cervical fascia like this right but it won't change this lump won't change because it is significantly enlarged in size or the size is so large so that so it won't change the prominence won't change then i would like to palpate the normal area right so in the left submandibular region i can't palpate any abnormality or any lump over there right but in the right side i can palpate a firm lump right firm lump which is 5 uh, by 3 cm in size right with well defined margins with well defined margins right with well defined margins and the surface is regular surface is regular and the surface smooth right so i can move the skin in both directions over the lump so it is not attached to the skin right ama man chuttak me ek hola wana ridena wana kiya right i can move the lump without significant pain and lump is mobile on transverse plane right lump is mobile on transverse plane right but not in other way right so in uh, transverse plane the lump is bit mobile right i can uh, move the lump on the transverse plane now i am ask the patient to contract the mylohyoid muscles and then check the mobility then tada karaganda or the mobility is significantly reduced the lump is fixed so the lump is attached to the mylohyoid muscles right lump is attached to the mylohyoid muscle that is the only thing that i want to check for right so i can't palpate any submental lymph nodes uh, and uh, no obvious jugular digastric no level 3 lymph nodes on the right side or level 4 lymph nodes and the posterior triangle also i can't palpate any enlarged lymph node on the right side and in the left side also no submental no submandibular no jugular digastric or level 3 or level 4 nodes and no posterior group lymph nodes there right what are you now are the value to the end right so the when the patient is protruding the tongue no deviation no deviation that means that the hypoglossal nerve is intact right cut the vetra to the end cut are in the end so obviously the patient doesn't have any teeth in the mouth right but in the lower jaw but in the upper jaw i can see some teeth but no any carious teeth right then the vetra to the end so when i'm examining the oral mucosa the oral mucosa is fairly healthy i can't see any ulcers over there are tola perlanna mem so 
the examined oral mucosa and the buccal mucosa is percutorinum fairly healthy right okay chotta katarane videna wana kiya now i'm going to put my index finger over there in the mouth at the floor of the mouth and then i'm now i'm moving the lump now i'm moving the lump by pressing or oh, pressing by my thumb into the oral cavity and pressing from my index finger from the oral cavity to the outside now i can by manually palpate the lump like this and can move it without significant tenderness so it confirms that this is a submandibular lump and sometimes if it is so right so if you so sometimes when you are pressing over there if it is sialadenitis like something you can see the pus so liquids come when you are pressing over the submandibular duct but here you can't see it so it is unlikely to be sialadenitis right